Call to order the September 4th regular council meeting. Will the clerk please read the quote of the day? Yes. Thank you. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Will the clerk call the roll, please? Have you press one? Bill? Oh. I made up. <laughs> Fifteen present. There is a quorum. Alderman Decker is excused. For the Pledge of Allegiance, will Alderman Lassard lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As for approval of the minutes, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the past council meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the past council meeting. Is there any discussion or changes? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Confirmation of the mayor's appointments. First, the mayor's appointments. First, the mayor's appointments. Members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Business Improvement District. David Gass. Business owner, Tom Brickley, business owner, Mike Vanderstein, business owner, David Hanneman, property owner, David Sanderson, property owner, Caitlin Bratz, business owner, Mike Miller, business owner, Eileen Simmons, property owner, William Holbrook, property owner, Larry Schaefer, property owner, Chad Pelichek, city government. All <clears throat> well, the first uh, one, two, three, four, five for uh, terms to expire 9-30-2013. And the last six to expire at 9-30-2014, signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. And for the council's uh, information, the bid district is coming up with a new set of bylaws and rules. Um, and this will conform to their new, from a 13-man committee they currently have to an 11-committee that they'll be bringing up in the future. And we'll have to pass that before the end of September. So that's why these are being lied over now. Now the confirmation of the mayor's appointments. Uh, Marilyn Montemayor to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Housing Rehabilitation Loan Commission to fill the unexpired term of Jason Shane, whose term expires 4-21-2014. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept the appointment. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the RO and approve the... Can we take the other one, too? Appointment. And the other one? Mario Chautala to be considered for appointment to the mayor's international committee term to expire 422-2013, signed by the mayor. Alderman Hammond, both? Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor, have the mayor, uh, the clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. Public forum tonight? Uh, we have this evening Delcy Johnson. Delcy, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor Van Ackeren, Alderman, City Clerk Richard, City Attorney McLean, and citizens. Board Docs was presented as an opportunity to help citizens who follow council meetings on cable to be better informed. The agenda documents would be displayed on a screen in the council chamber for all to see. I questioned how it was possible to display the consent agenda, which sometimes numbers 20 documents, so that citizens would be able to read them in the two or three minutes that it takes the council to dispose of them. When it turned out that it is not possible to show those documents, I was told it didn't really matter because all of those items had already been dealt with. 
But what about documents that are referred to committees where if a citizen was concerned about an issue, uh, they would have time to call an alderman or probably attend a meeting where that issue would be discussed. The answer to that was that before board docs, citizens didn't have the information either, so it didn't matter. Cable viewers never see a single document. I am a conservationist, an avid recycler, and I support the idea of a paperless council. But to present the concept as a way to better inform the public is disingenuous. Actually, it is a step backwards, because now on controversial issues, citizens do not know how their aldermen voted. I haven't attended a council meeting for many months, so I don't know the situation in the council chamber. But for those watching at home, a person cannot possibly find the names of their aldermen to know how they voted because the information is displayed for such a short period of time and in a random order, depending on who pushed their response button first. I don't know the cost of the electronic system for the council chamber, but from my vantage, it was wasted tax dollars. <clears throat> I would also like to discuss the reorganization of the fire department. It is, of course, a given that the department responds to various emergency situations. But in 2011, the department responded to only 90 structure fire calls. That's fewer than two calls per month per station. During the first quarter of 2012, the department responded to a total of nine structure fire calls. During the second quarter, the department, department responded to seven calls. It is possible that some stations did not receive a single fire call during a month or even a three-month period. But in his second quarter report, Chief Herman wrote about the rash of recent fires. The last time I remember a discussion of closing a station, Chief Herman expressed concern about what would happen if there were two fires at the same time. That is a possibility, of course, but should we staff five fire stations on the chance that at some time there might be two fires at the same time? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we staff our police department for the possibility that at some time we might have a Columbine or Aurora, Colorado situation. I hope you will also consider half full pay, half paid on call as an option. That idea raises another red flag for Chief Herman, who will argue about response times and personal safety. But approximately half of Sheboygan's firefighters live outside the city, where they depend on volunteer fire protection for their property and families, with evidently no concern about response times and personal safety issues. If volunteer responses are acceptable for emergencies for firefighters living outside the city, paid on call should be a viable option for the city. Ambulance transports take firefighters away from the city for several hours at a time, possibly six hours in an example given by Chief Herman at a salaries and grievances meeting in 2010. But Chief Herman does not seem to be concerned with not having those two or three firefighters available for firefighting duties while they are away from the city for possibly six hours. Sheboygan has more fire stations per square mile than any other city of comparable size and population in the state of Wisconsin. Sheboygan's service area is 14 square miles. By comparison, Janesville is 28 square miles and has five stations. Beloit, 15 square miles, three stations. Wausau, 18 square miles, three stations. Fond du Lac, 19 square miles, three stations. La Crosse, 22 square miles, four stations. I met with Chief Administrative Officer Amodio and Chief Herman on Thursday. Their position seems to be that since Sheboygan provides fire protection at one of the lowest per capita rates in the state, that we should continue the, set, we should continue the status quo. As a taxpayer, I think if you can improve on that, you should do so. Finally, I would like to address the cost of the ambulance service. The ambulance budget only includes salaries and benefits for four firefighters, but the salary benefit total for the required 21 firefighters was $1,491,427 in 2011. EMS calls accounted for 70% of the incidents that firefighters responded to. 70% of $1,491,427 is $1,043,999. Excuse Bringing me, Nancy, the would you, would you, I'm sorry, would you like your additional minute? Thanks. Motion to approve. <clears throat> 70% of $1,491,427 is $1,043,999, bringing the total expenses of the ambulance service to $1,289,255. Actual collections were 41% of what was billed. 
subtracting revenues of $983,116, which includes almost $100,000 from 2010 billings, results in a marginal loss of $307,139 for the ambulance service in 2011. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. Is there any more? That would be it. All right, we'll move to the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass all ROs and RCs and put upon passage all resolutions from 2-1 through 2-11. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Three one communication from Brian Win will Winton will be referred to public protection and safety. Report of officers. Four one a report of the city clerk submitting estimated value costs associated with contracts for provision of an annual biometric screenings. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, with your permission, I'd like to hold that one for 5-2. We will hold that for 5-2. 4-2 will be referred to finance. 4-3 will be referred to finance. 4-4 referred to finance. 4-5 will be referred to public protection and safety. 4-6 will be referred to salary and grievance. 4-7 will be referred to finance. 4-8, an RO from the City Plan Commission recommending zoning map be changed will just lie over. 4-9, an RO from the Mayor requesting to that resolutions 49-12-13 by Alderman Hammond and, and, 40, and resolution 50-12-13 be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, this has been a ongoing process and battle inside of, of City Hall, and I think it's time to bring this full circle to an end. Um, the amount of staff time that has been, in my opinion, wasted is well within, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So um, you know, it's come to light, you know, there's been a lot of horse trading of votes for various different things in order to get the garbage fee repealed and, and things. Uh, and then finally, just the incessant badgering of our employees, the morale inside City Hall, this needs to end. So my recommendation um, and um, my motion would be that this goes to finance those documents. Um, I think uh, the sooner we can put this issue to bed, the sooner we can move on and start planning for 2015 and beyond. I think from a morale standpoint, it will certainly lift the morale inside City Hall. Um, it'll hopefully eliminate all the angry outbursts the slamming of doors, um, the screaming at department heads, all that will be done by moving this to finance. And then on the 24th, uh, we'll have the conversation and move on. So my motion is to move this to finance. Um, those documents are included, including 5-3. Um, second. It's been moved and seconded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> including document 5-3, okay. which is uh, the monthly premium equivalent. Um, that's uh, set the lie over. Just move that back to finance. All right. Thank so you. Moved and seconded to refer the, all the documents to finance. Alderman Hammond, I, I agree with you too, and that's, that's why we were trying to send it to one committee to, to have one budget and put this all behind us. City Attorney. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The, uh, the documents that uh, are referred to as the mayor's executive yes, budget came into the council previously and was referred to strategic. Right. Yeah, Steve. The uh, documents that the mayor submitted as the executive budget were introduced into council on August 20th, I believe, and referred to strategic fiscal plan. So those aren't before the council at this point. Correct. Uh, so the council could not, by this motion, refer those documents, but uh, that could be done in other, other fashion. Right. It's Maybe my Alderman Hammond could address what his intent is with the. Thank you. Go ahead, Alan. Um, absolutely right. Thank you, Attorney McLean, for pointing that out. We will um, be having a strategic fiscal planning meeting on the uh, 10th, um, in which time that document will be um, presumably referred. Can't speak for the committee until they make the vote, but presumably referred to finance. Um, and then 
taken it up on the, it would come back to council on the 17th, that recommendation acted on and then to finance on the 24th where we'll have all the documents in one place. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Any further discussion? <laughs> Motion is to refer all the documents to finance. Clerk will call the roll. Including the 5.3, is that what yes. you said? <clears throat> Bill? 13 ayes, <clears throat> excuse me, two noes. Motion carries. 5 1, a resolution, a resolution ratifying settlement with Dan's Fish Incorporated. Alderman Hammond. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would ask for a suspension of the rules on this. Second. It's been moved and seconded for suspension of the rules. On suspension only, we'll vote. Clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, move that we pass the resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be passed. Is there any discussion? Alderman Bourne. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alderman Hammond, is that the uh, shanty that's next door to the Mucky Duck that we've been talking about for quite a while, or is this a different one? No, that's you're correct. Okay, so. thank you. Is there any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 5 2 a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a co contract for the provision of health screening biometric service. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would also like to bring now 4-1 with this um, and ask for, again, a suspension of the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules on 5-3 and we're bringing along the RO from the clerk. On, the clerk will call the roll on suspension. <clears throat> 13 ayes, one no, and one abstention. Motion carries. Alderman Hammond. Uh, again, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, for, on 4 1, I'd make a motion to accept and file, and on 5 2, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that 4 1 be accepted and placed on file, and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 13 ayes, one nay, and one abstention. Motion carries. 5-3 resolution will lie over. 5-4 resolution will be referred to finance and public works. Reports to committees. Report from salary grievance recommending staff assistance to a committee of the whole and passing the substitute Resolution. Alderman Raisler? Koff. Alderman Koff. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 13 ayes, one no, and one abstention. Motion carries. 6-2 by an RC from salary grievance recommending repealing resolution number 500809 regarding residency requirements for all new hirees. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the uh, RC be put upon its passage and the substitute uh, resolution be passed as well. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be put upon its passage and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the nuts and bolts of this is basically looking at uh, getting rid of the residency uh, requirement to <clears throat> obtain the best and most qualified candidates. Uh, there was some discussion about uh, looking at less wage. I know that was discussed uh, a couple times in salaries and grievance. Uh, I'm not sure if that is something that would appease those that are, are not in favor of this. If it is, um, we could send it back to the committee and look at it some more, but um, 
Uh, Attorney McLean hasn't had enough time really to uh, investigate that, so I guess that's kind of at our wishes here. So, um, otherwise, I um, look at supporting um, getting rid of the residency requirement. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you, Alderman Reisler. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not going to support this uh, resolution. I believe it's important for us as aldermen and uh, leaders of our city to say, hey, this is one of the best places to live in, in the United States. Uh, requiring residency to live and have a job in the city of Sheboygan should be an honor, and I'm not going to support this resolution. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not going to support it either. Uh, I was one of the original authors of the resolution back in 2008, along with Alderman Heideman and a couple of other older persons who are no longer with us. <clears throat> uh, just a couple of uh, couple of things that were on that resolution back in uh, uh, June of 2008 is whereas 42% of all city employees live outside the city of Sheboygan, and whereas city residents are being denied employment to those higher higher paying family supporting city positions currently held by out of towners. And whereas the city of Sheboygan is one of the cleanest and safest cities in the nation because of our, because of our excellent police fire protection and work done by our public works department. Whereas Sheboygan offers excellent schools, both private and public. And uh, it goes on, it gives a few other whereases, but uh, I just wonder whether we're really throwing out a wide enough net when we're trying to recruit people to work for the city. Uh, I guess we, we advertise that job service. Uh, I'm wondering if we're doing Craigslist. I think a lot of people that are looking for employment are looking there. Uh, I think we have to do a better job of selling living in Sheboygan to some prospective hires. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, we haven't had difficulty require, uh, recruiting people for department heads. I, I remember when uh, Chief Herman was up for appointment, uh, we had about 40 applications for that position. I believe for the police chief, we had several uh, applications from both inside and outside the department. Uh, we've been able to fill firefighter uh, positions. Maybe we've lost some people who've chosen not to move here, but we've been able to fill the positions. The same with the uh, with the uh, police department. I understand DPW has been having some difficulty hiring candidates uh, for various reasons, but so far we've been able to, uh, I think, meet most of our hiring requir requirements, <coughs> except for, I believe, one position in finance and one that was working in the development office that took the job, and then I believe, if I understand correctly, threatened to quit the job if, if that person had to move into Sheboygan. So uh, I just think we need to uh, spread a wider net uh, and in our recruitment efforts, and uh, th that's the reason I'm not going to support it. And one of the reasons I, I wrote this, helped write this resolution back in an 08 is I think with the current state of economy, the way it is, it was very tough back in 08, and I wanted to see those families supporting jobs go to uh, Sheboygan residents as, if at all possible. And uh, we still have a very high unemployment or underemployment situation in Sheboygan, or even for that matter, people have given up looking for work. So I'd like to see city employment stay with residents of the city. I do have one question I'd like to ask of Sandy, our HR manager, if she could step forward. Good evening, Sandy. Good evening. Uh, the question I have for you, is it possible to, when you're recruiting somebody, to have some kind of a point system and being possibly a city resident getting more points than a non-city non resident, or is that, would that be discrimination? Is that illegal to do something like that? No, we could, we could get, give more points or certainly give more uh, credentials of somebody if everything was equal. We had two candidates, one from outside the city and one was within the city. We could certainly give preference to the city resident. Thank you. Any other questions, Alderman Bob? That's it. Thank you, Sandy. Actually, okay. thank you. <laughs> when is my turn? I have questions for Me too. Oh, well, why don't we take you first then, as long as she's there. Um, thank you. I have uh, kind of mixed emotions on this uh, when it comes to um, residency requirements, but. Uh, you and I talked a little bit this afternoon about you know giving preference to uh, residents that live inside the city of Sheboygan, um, whether it's a point system or just all else being equal, we'd give the nod to to somebody. 
um, and you shared something quite interesting with me with your time at your previous employer about when you would cast the net, if you will, for applicants, you know, what you got versus what you're getting here. You maybe want to share that real quick? Sure. Typically, the, the casting of the net goes to the Sheboygan Press, which also links the position directly to Career Builder, which is currently the number one recommended in internet uh, recruiter. We also do, of course, a job service. In mid-2011 at Mayline across the river, we had positions open that we had entry-level labor positions that would recruit over 100 applicants. Six months later, for the DPW, we had approximately 30 applicants for the same type of position, same type of pay. Uh, the residency for the accountant position. Currently, we have four qualified candidates. Three of them live just outside the city limits and won't go to the next step. For having four candidates of, uh, of good qualifications is great, but it's limiting. Uh, that's and there kind of in lies my challenge for two reasons. One, our, our entry level for DPW is $14 an hour. Mm -hmm. So we're going to ask somebody with, that makes $28,000 a year that may live in Howard's Grove, um, who may have lost their job somewhere else and got picked up with the city. It's Morris Code over here by Steve. Um, to sell their house during a bad economic time for a $28,000 a year job and then move into the city. I, I kind of struggle with that. Um, you know, I, I can understand it for department heads and for EMS or police and fire because response time is, a, is critical, but I have a hard time with it for just rank and file employees. Um, you know, again, especially when they're making $14 an hour to have to sell their house and move into the city. And, you know, it is a great city to live in. And I think anybody that lives in, in other surrounding areas agree that Sheboygan's a great city. And I don't think anybody that doesn't support this uh, or, or that supports getting rid of the residency requirement doesn't think Sheboygan's a great place to live, but there's a, there's a pragmatic or a practical uh, piece to this too. So um, I think maybe a compromise in this is that, you know, as part of our hiring practice, preference is given to, um, and very well uh, documented, that preference is given to residents of the city of Sheboygan, all else being equal. You playing video games, Mr. McLean? <laughs> but thank you. Any other questions of Sandy? All right, thank you, Sandy. Any? Oh, thank uh, you, that's right. it. Alderman Donahue. <clears throat> um, essentially, I would just support uh, Alderman Hammond's uh, observations. As I understand it from talking to Sandy, this ordinance um, change does not affect department heads who must live within the city limits. Um, when I spent uh, considerable time on the Civil Service Commission, when you have um, department head positions available, um, the, we would get uh, applications from all over the United States. It's odd, but I think somehow it's easier to move from Rhode Island into the city of Sheboygan than to move from Howard's Grove into the city of Sheboygan, particularly if your job is not that of a department head. Why is that? Well, at $14 an hour, likely you are not an, um, you, you may be a homeowner, but you may be a renter with a lease that cannot be voided for the simple purpose that you want to move away. Uh, changing school districts uh, is, uh, is difficult. There is a way that you can do um, inter-district uh, uh, tr uh, inter transfers, um, but there's a very uh, narrow timing to do that. So if I'm gonna move from Howard's Grove into the city of Sheboygan and I'm gonna have to enroll my children in the Sheboygan Area School District, but I want to keep them in Howard's Grove, I can do that, but I can do it in the month of January. So if the job comes up in September, then my children also have to switch schools. Unfortunately, as we all know, these are difficult economic times, and it is hard to sell a house. It is hard to obtain credit to buy a house. Um, I agree with Alderman Bourne in, in terms of the whereas clauses for the um, uh, resolution in 2010. Uh, this is a fine city to live in um, for all the reasons that he outlined, and, and I don't think any of us would dispute that. I just don't think we necessarily need to connect them with those qualities of the city and recruiting good people to work for us. One of the reasons that we are a great city is that we do have good people working for us. So if we have to take um, the, a lesser qualified candidate, um, 
for a fairly routine position because of the residency requirement. In fact, we are not doing our city a favor. Uh, we are. Um, we are, to some extent, weakening, weakening the structure of, 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 of our departments. So I did some research on my own. Residency requirements have a long and storied history in American municipal government. It really came in many respects from the time when city positions were cherished positions that you got um, through um, who you knew and how you knew that person and so forth. Um, and so clearly one of the th things that you'd want to do was make sure that the people that you were delivering jobs to lived within your district. Well, we've certainly moved beyond that. Um, we are an internet-based society. Um, the city of Sheboygan is wonderful, but so are all the other communities surrounding us. People are going to choose to live where they want to live, but for this particular provision. Because this is a narrow revision, it does not do away with department head uh, the requirement that department heads live within the city. Because police and fire uh, positions are already controlled by their own residency and, and, and living arrangements, this is really for our non-represented um, everyday workers in, in the city. And for that reason, I think that we should, that our goal always has to be to recruit the best. And so for that reason, I will support this resolution. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Bourne. Thanks, Mayor. Just follow up on one thing that Alderman Hammond said. Uh, <clears throat> these may be 14 or 15 uh, dollar an hour jobs done at DPW, but I would challenge uh, anybody to come up with a benefit package in Sheboygan uh, or even the surrounding area for a 14 or 15 dollar an hour job that we, the, the benefit package that the city of Sheboygan uh, provides even with, even after Act 10. When we're getting a, a Cadillac health plan and uh, a retirement program that we're, where the city is providing half of the funding for that, uh, I don't think there's another 14 or 15 an hour job in Sheboygan that provides that kind of benefit. So you've got to look at more than just the wage of 14 or 15 dollars. You've got to look at the benefit package. And if I was a, a young guy with a family and I had a chance to get a job with the kind of benefits that we provide, even if it was 14 or $15, I think I, know, I, know, I would know where I would want to go to work. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Six ayes, nine noes. Motion carries. Um, the clerk has informed me we'll have to go back to 6 1. Motion failed. I'm sorry. The motion failed. Mm -hmm. Motion failed. Yeah. We'll have to go back to 6 1 because it didn't register on our computer, the votes. So 6 1 was a RC from salary grievance recommending staffing assistance for the committee of the whole and passing the attached substitute resolution. We don't have to re-vote. I just want to show you what the vote was. Okay. Um, 6 1. Because it did not pass. 6 1 was the one about staff assistance for Committee of the Whole. That passed. This was the vote. It was six ayes and nine noes. That's not right. That's not right? No. 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 It's six like two. 13 to 1 or 13 to 2, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. 13 to 1. 6 one. 1 was. 13 1 1. The Packers. 13 1 1. Yep. Really? Yep. Okay, never mind then. Can we do it over? Do you want it to do it over just so we show that? Can you? Sure. Can we do that, David? Go over the top? You're right. It didn't show up right. It's right here. I got to do it. So you're voting on to pass for the staff assistance for Committee of the Whole. Oh, there's, your, there's your vote right there. It's right Excuse there. me? It's 13 one one right, right there. there. The next screen didn't come Right, but right. the next screen is not right where it shows who voted what. It shows six to nine on the next screen. Oh. Okay. It won't take it, Dave.
And how would you like me to do that? Mm-hmm. Six one. Yep. Current slide. Try it again. Won't take it. Can we do it? We do it by, yeah, by it hand by so that it's on record and we can change it. I just the, need to know who the one no and one abstain was. Do you mind doing it that way? No, let's let's call the, do the whole thing. Yep. So Bellinger? No. Aye. Warren? Abstain. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Not here. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichak? Nay. Excuse me? Nay. No. I'm the one. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. All right. 13, 1, and 1. All right. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for going back. 6 2 failed. Going on to 6 3 will be referred to strategic. Fiscal planning. 6 4, a committee report from law and licensing recommending denying taxi driver license. 9633, Alderman Vanderwood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is Verlin Wicker here this evening? He is not here. Um, we had inter or invited him to our meeting um, two separate occasions, and he did not show up, so we had to deny his license. Thank you, Alderman Van Der Woody. Any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. An R six five an RC from Law and License re recommending denying taxi license number ninety six sixty four Alderman Vanderwille. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Alderman Vanderwille, under discussion. Is Sean Lloyd here this evening? He is not here. The committee had voted uh, four to one to deny the license based on his lengthy um, record as well as the, as a police recommendation. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 6-6, six, six, an RC from Law and Licensing recommending denying beverage license number 9637. Alderman Vanderwood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwood. Is Nicole Morgan here this evening? She is not here. The committee voted three to two to deny her license. She revealed all of her convictions, but there was a concern for um, recent convictions in 2011 and 2012. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 6-6, six, six, an RC from Law and License recommending. We did that one. Oh, I'm sorry. 6-7. RC recommending from law and license recommending denying taxi license number 9657. Alderman Vanderwille. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is Ramona Garcia here this evening? She's not here. The committee voted to deny her license three to one. There was a negative recommendation from the police department based on the type of violation she had. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 6-8 RC from Law and License in recommending denying beverage license number 9662. Alderman Vanderwille. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwille. Is Araceli Vargas here this evening? She is here. Um, the committee voted three to two to deny her license. Uh, the concern was the recent violations in 2012 um, that consisted of battery, disorderly conduct, and obstructing. She 
also had um, numerous violations in 2007 or between the years of 2007 and 2010. Thank you. Would you like to address the council, please? Could you give us your name, please? Araceli Vargas. Okay, go ahead. Um, I came unprepared. I'm not sure what to say. I am embarrassed, and I do feel that I did pay the consequences. Because of my belligerent and ignorant behavior, I did uh, suffer some consequences. I did spend four days in jail. Um, I was also denied work at the Kohler Company for uh, room service, a house attendant at the five-star hotel they have at Kohler. Um, all I would like to say is that um, all the actions that were taken were uh, because I was under the influence of alcohol and I have, after the offenses, I have stayed away from alcohol, so um, that's it. Any questions of the applicant? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ma'am, where will you be working if we grant this license? Legend Larry's. I would be cooking mostly um, since it is um, known as for their wings. Uh -huh. So you'd be mostly cooking, you said? Well, cooking and bartending, but it's half and half. Okay, where have you worked before this job at Legend Larry's? I'm currently um, employed at Briscoe County Woodgirl as a hostess. Okay. Uh, before that, I was employed at Fountain Park Family Restaurant. And before that, I worked at Lakeside Foods, worked there for six months. And because of my good attendance, I was referred to the one in Belgium and worked there um, for three more months and then got laid off since it is a temporary job. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, and all those times working at the multiple areas where you were serving food and, and beverages and such, was there any violations that were conducted on work time or anything like that? No. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Thank you very much. Turning the discussion back to the floor, the motion is to accept and file the, or accept the committee report and deny the license. And I vote would be to deny. Alderman Raisler. I, I just have one question. So we're, we're hitting September. When would she have to reapply for a license again? Would it be in April of next year? Or when if, do? If we were to. If we were to approve the license and, and not get rid of it, would it go a whole year or would it just be a few months to? Not next June, but the following June. Okay, thanks. Alderman Kath. Thank you, Mayor Van Hecker. Um, in 2012, Arcella Vargas had a 0.3 blood alcohol. Uh, going to the detention center was not an option, so she was brought to St. Nicholas Hospital. Uh, she punched a nurse in the stomach, and that's the battery conviction, disorderly conduct, and obstructing. In 2007, uh, OWI related um, operating after um, uh, revocation. Uh, second offense, underage alcohol in 2008, disorderly conduct in 2009, excuse me, 2008, and a uh, batter ordinance in 2010. So there, there seems to be a history here. And sure, um, you know, you change your ways and you would like to have the, the license. However, there were three offenses this year in 2012. So uh, my vote is no. Thank you, Alderman Kath. Alderman Bourne. Just for clarification, if we, if we vote to grant the license, then she would be up for another license. Would it be this coming spring or the following spring? The following. The following. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion? Any other discussion? Alderman Matichek. Thank you. And just to clarify, if she does have an incident in, in between, then it would be brought, again, brought up uh, to the committee, would it not? Sorry? If in the meantime, before she's up for renewal, if she does have an incident on the job, it would be brought up before the committee, correct? Yes, assuming the uh, uh, police department notified our office and, and the clerk's office, yes, it would be, come before the committee. 
Any other questions? <coughs> Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Yes or no. Six ayes, nine noes. So the committee report is not accepted. She can reapply. And she can apply for her license. Can we just make a yeah. motion to do it? I think she already has license applied. License granted. We need a motion now to grant the license. Alderman Hammond. So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded to grant the license. Is there any discussion? Hold on just a second. Oh. Clerk will call the roll. Hold on just a second. <laughs> Nine eyes, six nose. Motion carries and the license granted. Six nine from Public Works recommending authorizing city official to approve the waiver of application form needed for right away donation to the city business center. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move, move to accept the RC and adopt the, uh, and pass the substitute resolution. Second. It's been moved to accept the RC and pass the sub accept and adopt the pass the substitute resolution. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Matters laid over. Resolution 7-1, resolution 56 12 13 by Alderman Hammond, transferring appropriations in the 2012 budget. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, make a, uh, I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to put the resolution upon its passage. Is there any discussion? None. Clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Other matters. Attorney. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Roger Miller, Miller Engineers and Scientists, regarding extending grading onto top of Bluff owned by the City for Michelle and Jeff Gentine along the east side of their lots at 3615 and 3619 North 6th Street. That will be sent to Public Works. And 8.2 is a resolution to accept the amended operating plan of the Harbor Center Business Improvement District. That will go to finance. And there's an 8.3. Eight, number three? Yep, 8.3. And 8.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. And that will go to, we'll just lie over. So law and licensing. Law and licensing. Alderman Hammond. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Then move and second to adjourn. Clerk will call the roll. Julie? You want to go? 15 eyes. We're adjourned. <laughs>